Now, you've probably been using Adobe Audition, but how do you really add those sparkles, those finishing touches to get your podcast from good to great? Let me show you a few tips on the way I record a podcast. Here inside the waveform view, I've got an interview that I conducted and you'll notice I've made use of stereo channels as I'm recording two voices. So no need for stereo information. I can have myself the host on channel left here and on the right channel, I can have my guest here. So I can do mixing inside the multi-track. You'll also notice I placed five markers here. And this is where I need to make some edits later. Markers are super handy, especially if you're recording into Audition in real time, because you can hit the M key at any point, say here, and place another marker. And you can even move them about after the recording to dial in on the exact place you want them to go. And if I go on the time bar here and use my scroll wheel, I can zoom right into the point that my cursor is, like so, and really move that mark to exactly where it needs to be. Now this is all great, but let's go back into my editor view, zoom out to a high level here, and then have a look at the whole audio file. There it is with all my markers. And let's start a new multi-track session, and we'll call this Mic Podcast and start editing. Now, because I've got them on two separate tracks, what I need to do next to the file name is pop open this little triangle to get the left and the right. And then I can put the left on one track, and the right on a secondary track like so. And I can hit Shift and E to get rid of all the tracks I don't need. I can use my scroll wheel over here to make those tracks a little bit bigger and then zoom out to see what I'm working with. So first I'm gonna to cut to the start of my podcast episode, which is about here. Now I can zoom in on this little section here. If I didn't get that quite precise, I can move this over a bit, delete and start. Let's play. My guest is Mike Dawson. Mike is a professional voiceover talent. He Sounds really, really good already. Now what I can do is zoom out, move this piece of audio in a little bit. And what I'm gonna do is immediately match the level of both the host and the guest by selecting both tracks, right clicking, match clip loudness, and then click OK to that. And immediately it'll raise up the voice and make it sound great. Now it takes a little while because it's analyzing all of our audio, which is over 30 minutes in duration, but it finds a good match on the loudness of each track. And look, it's done it. Now we should hear my guest and myself should be at similar uh, volume levels. Recorded records uh, on tape. Indeed. Wow. So tell me a little bit about, um, obviously. Okay. So good level between the guest and me, which is fantastic. But what about making sure we've got everything nice and smooth with no gaps? Well, I can go ahead and insert a ripple delete here. That will delete the audio on this track and this track. And I can access that from the right click menu and look for ripple delete. And then we'll say time selection in all tracks, or you can remember shift command and delete or shift control and delete on PC and zip it zips everything over. And if I want, I can select both tracks, grab them by the title bar and do a little crossfade here. That will do a smooth edit and make everything flow nicely. Recorded records uh, on tape. Indeed. Wow, so tell me a little. Okay, so I can go through and make those cuts, make those edits. I can zoom out and I can also see that I've got markers here. So this is where I've got an error I need to fix. Let's zoom in on this and play and listen. I'm sorry, right now I'm using the NT2000 to record a brand new audiobook. And this mic is. Let's play this. My favorite right now. Right now, I'm using the. Uh, now he forgets what he's using. The, uh, uh, five. Uh, I'm sorry. Right now, I'm using the NT2000. Okay, so then I can make another cut and I can use my shortcut. So Command, Shift, Delete, and it zips it right up. I'm using the. Uh, NT2000. And again, if I want to crossfade that to smooth that out so we don't hear any sign of the error made there, we just grab the title and see those yellow lines there indicating there's a crossfade going on for absolute smooth editing. Using the uh, NT2000. And it sounds absolutely perfect. And finally, we want to finalize this audio and make it sound great. So if I zoom out a little bit, I can actually go ahead and add some EQ to my guest in the effects rack. I'd go in here and I go to filter and EQ and I go to parametric equalizer. And here I can start shaping the voice by adding a high pass filter to roll off bass. My favorite right now, right now I'm using the. Add some high end to make it a bit crisper. My favorite right now, right now I'm using the. Uh, Bring that high pass down a bit. My favorite right now. Maybe notch up uh, 
point three here. My favorite right now. Right now, I'm using the uh, NT two thousand. Chop out some effects to really get him having a crisp, clean sounding voice, and maybe we'll add a bit of compression as well to keep those volume levels consistent. Again, onto a secondary effect rack track. We go into dynamics and we look for the compressor here. My favorite right now. Right now, I'm using the uh, NT two thousand to record a brand new audiobook. And you can see here that the compressor is kicking in with these red lights coming on, and I've boosted up the gain a bit to just make the audio a bit louder. My favorite right now, right now I'm using the uh, NT2000. Now we can also check how that's sounding on my track. Uh, it would be quite a challenge and you need to have a... Let's now play them both in context. The cost, can you do it? I said, yeah, we're German, we can do anything. That's an awesome story. Wow. So the yeah. uh, Now, if I really like the effects that I've applied to my guest channel, I can also copy them over to my own channel by simply getting out of the effect here, going to Mixer View, and dragging and dropping from the guest track 2 to my host track 1. And boom, now I have the effects on both tracks, which is really cool. And if I'm super happy and I want to use this every time I create the perfect podcast, I just go into File, Export, session as template and we'll call this mic podcast episode or mic podcast app click ok and we can save all the changes if we want that's absolutely fine that's going to write that all out ready to mix down now if i close this all out every time i start a brand new podcast file new multi-track session i can go look for my template mic podcast app Click OK. It's going to restore me back exactly where I was with all the effects and every edit I made. And of course, if I want to use this as a template for my podcast, I can just clear out the audio and leave the effects on each track so that they'll be there every time I arm a track to record and start recording my latest podcast episode. And as you can see right there, I did that. I recorded some audio and it's already got the presets added to my podcast. It is so easy to edit with those pro touches inside Adobe Audition. Remember ripple delete, remember the ability to add many different effects. And if you want to know more about why the multi-track is so interesting and so important for audio editing, you definitely need to go and watch my previous video on multi-track editing right now.